Should we do this one in English or in German? Yeah. Good morning from New York. I feel like I have not spoken yet in this vlog. <laughs> um, first of all, this video is going to be in English. Thank you so much for your comments on the last video. It made me so happy to read them. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to let me know what they thought of the video and how you liked the, yeah, the idea to speak a bit more English in my videos. Um, so that gave me a lot of reassurance and I really didn't expect the overwhelmingly positive feedback. Um, so if you haven't seen this video and you're wondering why I'm speaking a different language, <laughs> um, I will link it up, um, up at the top and you can watch it. Um, so yeah, I've resulted to the plan that I'm not going to speak English in every video. If When I'm back in Berlin, I'm sure it's going to be more natural to include more German speaking videos. Right now we're in New York and it makes so much sense to speak English. I'm surrounded by <laughs> Scott's friends and family uh, who speak English and in a city that speaks English it just is very natural to me. Even in Berlin it's very natural to me because most of our friends are English speaking and Scott and I speak English all day. So it comes very natural to me. Some people said it's not not authentic. It, luckily it was like maybe two out of a hundred comments but some people said it sounds more authentic if I speak my mother tongue. But to be very honest with you, in my daily life, I consume and I speak 90% English. So for me, this is my authentic self. This is now who I am more than the German Anna. I feel like when I speak German to people, it almost throws me off. I like have to switch gears in my head. And so that's why sometimes when I pick up the camera to speak and to vlog in German, I get very like... I don't know, I feel like I sometimes struggle to find the right words or to come across in the right way that I want to and I'm sometimes more myself when I speak English. It's natural obviously because my husband speaks English so that's just the language that we choose on a daily basis. Anyway, welcome to my New York vlog. I spent the weekend in Connecticut and then we came into the city yesterday. We co-worked in a friend's apartment, which was really nice because he had amazing views. And then, um, yeah, now we're in Scott's brother's apartment and um, just spending the week in New York. I am super hungry, so I'm gonna go get some bagels, which is a bucket list item every time I'm in New York. And I'm gonna take you with me. My regular bagel order is a whole wheat sesame bagel toasted with vegetable tofu cream cheese. It's delicious. You should try it when you're here. Apartments are just so incredibly expensive here. This is like Brooklyn. If you want a studio, 1,800. Something like two bedroom, one bath, 4,250 per month. Um, two bedroom, one and a half bath, 4,600. I mean, it's not that we're looking, but like sometimes I come here just to reality check and see how crazy the rents are here. So we're, hello world. We're making our way to Manhattan. We are staying here in Brooklyn and I have nothing more to report back on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, no, we're gonna go see friends for dinner and see their baby who we last saw when it was a tiny, tiny human and now it's gonna be like crazy big. They changed so much. much better and I'm feeling so motivated to post again on Instagram and everything but basically it kind of cut our trip in New York short not really but kind of because I just couldn't share with you what I was doing I was basically just blowing my nose a hundred times a day um, that's not very interesting so back in Berlin I figured I would extend the vlog a little bit by like one day in Berlin just to give you a bit more to look at a bit more context a bit more stuff to watch um yeah today's friday and it's been so sunny in berlin which i am so happy about because it literally makes my happiness level a million times higher um i'm going to show you what i'm wearing today because it's almost completely sustainable fashion so i th thought it might be interesting for you um so first of all i'm wearing the main piece that you can see is this beautiful dress. I will link it down below. It's actually organic cotton, not wool. Um, and I wore like a nice base layer underneath, some tights. I think they're from Organic Basics. And then my slow label long sleeve boat neck top. Um, but yeah, it's so cute. I think it's really nice. I love dresses because they can just like complete, like they give you a complete look. They're like, you don't have to think about too much. Basically just pair it with something nice. Um, and this one is nice because it's actually also warm, so it's a good wintery dress, but still gives you a little bit of like action. And then I'm wearing these boots by Verna. They are a sustainable leather shoe brand from Europe. I think they're from Germany. Um, and I love these. I got them a couple of weeks ago and I've been wearing them all the time. They're super, super comfortable, really nice and warm and everything. And then this bag is Pauline Paris. I'm not really sure how sustainable this brand is, but um, I get so many questions about it and I wear it all the time. Quality wise, not the best. Um, the leather is perfect, but like the glue on the outside kind of around it is coming off. But they're quite nice about it. They can repair it for you. I just don't want to send it in because I wear it every day. But at some point I'm going <laughs> to send it back so they can repair it. Um, then I'm wearing Lea Studio earrings, Monica Vinader ring, and my sunglasses that I designed together with view eyewear they are the slow label x view and we still have them online so i can link them down below and i think they're really nice um and then because it's not that warm yet i'm also putting on a black coat from the slow label it's made of 100 recycled wool and i think i shared it in my last vlog too we're gonna go to a cafe now and i'm gonna take you with us i feel like this is the first time in five months that i said that i'm getting hot i feel heat on my body for the first time in five months. One of my 
biggest pet peeves in the German language is the word Digger. And you walk through a park in Berlin and you hear it like 20 times. And so every time I cringe. Oof, it was colder than I thought. So, should have worn a hat. I'm obsessed. Tonight, one of our good friends from Berlin is having her going away party. She was actually one of our first friends who connected us to everyone, basically everyone we know here, almost everyone. Um, she lived here for probably about five, six years and she's moving to London. So very sad to see her go, but I'm um, excited to see all of our friends for dinner tonight. Um, but before then, we have a lot of work. I need to do, um, well, I need to edit this video and I also need to do accounting, which both of those things take me about five hours each. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, it seems like I'm gonna have to work on the weekend. I don't know why, but I'm maybe the only one on this world in this world who actually enjoys doing the accounting for my businesses. I, I don't enjoy enjoy it, but I kind of like this like analytical, non-creative, like robot-like monotone work sometimes. I just it's a good balance to what I usually do. And it's somehow like you close a chapter. It's like the month is over. You finish all of the stuff for that month. Um I don't know, for some reason there's something nice about it. But uh, it, because I have the slow label, my clothing brand, and I have my influencer business, and technically the slow label also has an entity in Austria that I still have not fully closed, um, I kind of have to do three different accounting sessions that all take me multiple hours each. Um, so yeah, I guess the only annoying thing is really finding the time. And then I don't mind doing it, but I, I mind how it distracts me from my other many, many, many to-dos that I have. Anyway, I'm going to have my tea now with a little bit of oat milk and get going. Welcome from my chaos room. What I've been doing in the last couple of hours. Oh my god, this room is an absolute mess. I can't even get it. Welcome from my chaos room. So the past couple of hours, I have not been doing what I should have been doing. I've not done my accounting and I have not edited this video. So congratulations. But I spent the last couple of hours working on placing the next order with our factory. It's been a bit of a longer process this time again. So um, we won't be able to launch these products until probably May. But I wanted to share them with you. I haven't shared a proper sneak peek or I haven't, haven't really talked about them on YouTube. And I figured um, it's about time because they're so good. Um, I feel like they could become your favorite set this summer. I know I'm going to be living in them. Just to put into perspective like how much we loved it when we developed it. Um, first of all, we made the fabric kind of from, from like based off of a fabric that our fabric manufacturer had, but we didn't like it. It wasn't sustainable enough. There was too much polyester in there and it was just not really the touch, the softness, what we wanted. So we were looking for a very special kind of rib fabric for this product and we developed this one. So the pattern is just amazing because it's very un... how do you say uneven? It's... it... Uh, yeah, they're not very even rib textures so it makes it super interesting but then also the material is really nice it's organic cotton and roika roika is the kind of um thing that gives it um elasticity but it's not this very unsustainable elastic it's a bit of a more sustainable solution it's important for the product to really be nice and stretchy and fit you well but um we always try to use the more sustainable alternative roika and then yeah so this is the product this is a crop top and you can actually tie it in the waist in the back. It comes as a set with these pants. They have an elastic waist and they are not too long. They're kind of like ankle length and um, it's kind of like a culotte, uh, perfect for summertime. We wanted to initially just make it in black and just in these two pieces and then we loved it so much. Like honestly, I just want to keep it. I want to wear it every day. Um, so we loved it so much. We come, we're going to come out with it in this color as well like ecru and then also in burgundy i just got the lab tips and i approved them meaning like the lab sends like a little bit of a swatch and i have to see if this uh, works for us 
and it's just perfect. This is gonna be kind of our color in the next couple months. Um, and so we loved it so much, we actually are gonna add these two additional colors and also add a dress version that's like the top but a dress. And I'm just so excited. Um, yeah, it's always cool when you like see these products come to life and like work on something for months and never talk about it. Like I feel like I have not, not been really sharing with you what I've been working on in the last couple months. I can share one more sneak peek with you because it's already in production and it's probably gonna come in one and a half months or something. So we're working with a sustainable, fair company from Germany that also operates in India. They also have an Indian entity. Um, and they employ women in India who are living in areas where they wouldn't normally work or find work. They actually employ them directly. They show them how to sew clothing because these women, they may have done it in, in the past, but many of them haven't. And so it's a beautiful community. The company is called Jyoti Fairworks, and I can link it down below if you want to have a look at what like they have. And they also have their own products and they have a lot of um, information on their website, how they work, who they work with. I've gotten to know them in the last couple of months and they're so mindful about how they go about business. So I am super happy with this partnership and we've never produced outside of Europe and I actually was always very much like against it because I just wanted to keep production close to home. But honestly, I'm very glad I found them and I can say nothing but good things. I've FaceTimed the team there that is making the products and they're so sweet and amazing and it's really a great partnership. Um, I'm gonna talk more about that when the products come out. But anyway, we, as part of the collection, there's amazing clothing as well, but as part of the collection, we are gonna launch some bags. And this is one of them. It's made out of the most amazing, like stiff um, organic cotton and hemp canvas material. And it's just beautiful. It's like this very slim, sleek, elegant bag. Um, with a really really nice sturdy strap and I just love that it's not leather it's perfect for the summertime and it's also perfect if you just don't want to wear leather or just want to have a bag that is made out of a different material for once um, and then we also are making a bigger version of it this is the bindo um, and it basically has like a lot more space you can fit your laptop in there and it has this really nice strap as well and I just love the the shape of it it both of these patterns for the bags they use up most of the fabric there's almost no like leftover fabric which is amazing i don't even think there's any maybe a little bit i'm not quite sure but um it's definitely like a kind of pattern that is also in that sense very sustainable and yeah the bag also has like a pocket on the outside because of the way it's made like here you can just put your phone in there and it also has a pocket on the inside the other bag also does um, those two and yeah, I think it's so nice I think it's so cool to add something to the collection that you can like use to style these more basic pieces with like our basic t-shirts and stuff like that and just style it up a bit with the bags um, So yeah, um, I didn't place the order for the bags. I've already placed that they're already in production, but I placed some Restock orders for our basics and then these new basic pieces that I'm very excited about and something new that we're starting to do, sorry, this is a very long clip, but I feel like it's interesting. I love watching these kinds of things because I'm so interested in like other people's business and how they think about things, what they do. And anyway, let me know if you like this. Um, but yeah, one more thing that we're starting to do is to pre-wash the fabrics or the clothes before we ship them to our warehouse. And that is something that I never wanted to do because I was like, people are just going to wash it when they get it. When they get the clothing but we're so used to things being pre-washed without we without actually knowing as consumers because a lot of brands they pre-wash their clothing before they send it to you um it basically is means that after production it goes into another factory where it's being washed um what that does though is it pre-shrinks the clothing um, a lot of brands do that so when you get something and you wash it for the first time it doesn't change the size at all um, and that's because it's been washed already so the fabric 
jersey fabric especially just like gets a little bit smaller like three to five percent depending on the material and the fabric with the first wash and a lot of people are not used to that um but now i feel like it's something that also kind of stands for quality clothing if you know that what you buy will stay the same when you wash it and so um yeah this is something i've been thinking a lot about i know that we've discussed it internally at the slow label many years ago already and we decided not to do it but now i feel like it's the smarter thing to do in terms of just customer satisfaction and just longevity because the fit is really important for people and that makes so much sense um anyway i think it's super interesting i don't know how many brand i don't know which brands do it and which brands don't like that i buy from for example but it's definitely something to think about with natural materials because if something has polyester usually it's it's pretty durable in terms of washing but if it's like cotton or natural materials they usually tend to shrink with the first wash um and yeah try even though it's minimal you know and usually it stretches and and it relaxes a bit more when you iron steam or wear it i think people just have other expectations i don't know <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna now send that order. Um, it's gonna be very expensive, yay. And um, then hopefully soon leave for dinner. I'm not feeling like it. I'm telling you guys, I just wanna feel better and I still feel like crap physically. Um, but yeah, hopefully next week I'll be more healthy. I just put on some lipstick. This one's from Ilia. It's called, I think, Ladybird. I'll link it down below if I can find it. It's really good. It's like a very light kind of lip balm that's tinted and it moisturizes my lips and I really, really like it. I just re rediscovered it in an old bag. I lost it for like six months. Um, yeah, and we're going to dinner. New York life to now Berlin life and all the in-betweens of how we became 